Welcome to the Cerebral Edge with strength and conditioning specialist, Coach Chris. Join us for the next 30 minutes as Coach Chris shares ways to improve your health in all areas of your life. Along with his special guests, he strives to give you that cerebral edge to help make you 1% better every day. Now, here's Coach Chris. This is Power Talk 1040 KPPF. Welcome to the show. This is the show that aims to give you the edge to be 1% better every day. Add it all up to 365 days a year. And guess what, Kevin? What? You're on your way to be a better version of yourself. Yes, you are. And you are on that direction my, right now. That's my favorite part about you, man. You, you're not one of these guys that says, uh, I'll take this pill and you should be better in a week. <laughs> right. Uh, no, it's uh, you're saying to the world, yeah, you got to put some work in. Yeah, you got to get a l- little bit better every day, but we're going to keep track of that. Yeah. And I mean- pretty soon... You're going to look in the mirror or like me the other day, everybody around here going, dang, Kevin, right? you're looking pretty good. I'm like, (laughs) really? And they're like, yeah, I'm all right. Right. And it's been what? We've only been training one one day a week. One day a week for a couple months, I think. Yeah, for a few months, right? Right. So it wasn't like Mm -hmm. the next week people were like, dang, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little ways down the road before they went, oh, wow, I noticed a change. Right. Because unfortunately, yesterday I ran out of all my silver bullets to help everybody. Did you? Yeah, oh. I just just ran out of. Them. Yeah, and you know, and they're not uh, the they're not staying in stock very much either. So I think you, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but some people make massive amounts of money selling fake silver bullets, though, don't they? Yes, they do. And yeah. we're going to be talking about some of the myths, uh, the top ten myths that I have in myth busting for fitness and weight loss and all okay, that. Okay, so stuff. these are things that. You hear everywhere. Um, people talk about it all the time. All the time. And these are the golden tickets that are going to help you. And they're, this is what you got to do. Yep, this, these are the myths. This is exactly how you're supposed to train this, right? And okay. it's like, is it really? Okay. Uh, I think there might be a different way to do that, right? All or, right. This is going to be fun. Or people, yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm pretty excited for this one. Um, but yeah, so do you just want to get right into it? I, I think so. I'm, my, my brain is spinning. I'm thinking of all the little things that I've heard over the years. I'm, I'm interested to see what number one would be. Yeah. What are some of the ones you've heard? It's the fat burning pill. <laughs> the it's fat the fat burning, burning pill. pill yeah. I, I was watching TV uh, just the other day and it was uh, an ad and, and on the bottle, mm-hmm. fat burning pills. Fat burning pills. Yeah. And it was, it was, and I don't remember what they were touting, but I'm sure it was take a couple of pills in the morning, a couple of pills at noon or mm-hmm. something like that, uh, along with a small meal, and you're going to be skinny in about a week. <laughs> I, I, I didn't stick around for it, but what fat burning pills? Maybe there's a tapeworm in one of them pills. <laughs> if there's a tapeworm in there, then it is a fat then, burning pill. Then it'll definitely work for you. I'm telling you that right it'll now. It'll burn all kinds of things out of your body. <laughs> exactly. Um the, the strangest thing about, you know, being in the United States, we think everything is regularly, heavily regulated, right? Right. We think the supplement industry is, is, is you know, regu- heavily regulated. Right. By the F- we got the FDA, right, Kev? No, we got the FDA. They're watching the for us. FDA They're watching us. The FDA watches everything, yes. right? Right. They're keeping their eye out for us. <laughs> Wrong when it comes to the supplement industry, right? Is that right? Yeah. So back in, I think it was 95 or 98 in Utah, uh, they put together... A um, bunch of Congress people said, well, okay, well, we're going to have supplements be the only thing that is not regulated by the FDA. And the only way a supplement gets um, looked at is if there's enough complaints on it. And then the FDA finally comes in and looks at what's going on. So they're just putting out fires. So, yeah. So you could hit, buy like this uh, pill, right? And say it's, you know, testosterone boosting pill, right? Well, most of that pill could be like uh, rice flour, Right. And maybe a little bit of the actual ingredient they put in it. Right. Wow. Right? Yeah. So you're buying a lot of rice flour for like 80 bucks, right? You're like, wow. It's going to work. <laughs> yeah. So really, what's the answer if it's not regulated? I guess you just have to do your research. And you have to do your talk research. Talk to the pros. And- yep. Um, a lot of that. Uh, a lot of real food, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of what I talk about all the time, right? It's, it's boring. It's repetitive, right? But it's eat real food, get good recovery, Train smart, right? right? How much fake food is in what you're putting in your mouth? Yeah. 
How much is fake food? How much is supplemental food? How much of it is is processed? How much of it is preservatives? Mm -hmm. All that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Are you, are you actually taking the time to cook some of your meals, right? And then prep for the week, right? So say you go to the store and you buy, you know, a couple of pounds of bison, cook that up. You cook rice, right? You Maybe you put some vegetables in there. You know exactly what's in it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But then when you buy a lot of this prepared food, like a lot of stuff in it, and you're like, I have no idea. We have really lost our connection with, with food in this country, basically. Right. Um, but anyway, Yeah. Got a little off topic there, but yeah, fat burning pills. Right. Um, really not out there unless they've got a tapeworm in them. <laughs> That's right. They don't exist. They're not real. Don't buy them. <laughs> don't buy them. But uh, today, right, we, we trained a little bit of core. Yep. So this is actually going into number one. Okay. One of my biggest myths I've ever heard out there okay. is that you can target your upper and lower abs. Okay. You can target... Your upper and lower abs. So today, Chris, I want to work on my upper abs. Yep. So we're just going to do a bunch of crunches, right? And that's just focusing and on that's my just, upper. That's it. <laughs> yep. It's not going down the chain at all. Even though it's one big muscle, <laughs> it's just focusing on the top part, right? Okay. So tomorrow, if we want to hit lower abs, right, we're just going to do leg lifts. And okay. that's just going to hit straight. Okay. Lower abdominals. <laughs> Another big myth out there, right? Um, so basically, when people say upper and lower abs, they're talking about your one muscle. It's called your rectus abdominis. Mm -hmm. It goes from your ribs and then goes all the way down to your pelvis. It's one muscle, right? Yes, it is. That's like saying, okay, I want to get a peak in my bicep, so I'm only going to do curls halfway and then come back up. <laughs> uh, it doesn't work that no. you get some freaking weird looking people out there if that was true right yeah. oh, they yeah. get a peak like way up in their tiny in their tensile shirt, point at the top. <laughs> and then the rest would be just completely yeah. flat <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so uh targeting upper and lower abs is is total bs um and some of the ways i like to train abs though if, if you're looking for ways to train your abs uh -huh. some of the ways we did today kev right mm -hmm. squats sure. right Goblet squats, where the weight's out in front of you. Mm -hmm. You're hitting your legs and your butt, right? But your sure. core has to work, right? It has to, yeah. It, it, it can't not work in any type of squat or, or deadlift or any type like that, right? Because you just fall over. True. Right? Yeah. And then the other way that we worked them today was was uh, banded anti-rotation stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So Kevin's a softball player. Mm -hmm. He says, Chris, I want to get a lot of rotational power, mm -hmm. right? So what do we do today, Kev? We, we, we threw that medicine ball as if I had a bat in my hand as hard as I could mm -hmm. against the wall. Yep. Rotated hard. Hard. Boom. Boom. And then caught it. Caught it. Boom. Yep. Caught it. So, Boom. So I was going either from right to left, and then we switched it around, went from left to right. Mm -hmm. And then we went over and did the resistance band, just stood there and yep. held it, uh, resisting my arms pulling pulling like away from the wall and just held it there. Yep. So that was like the reverse. It was like the reverse. Yeah. It was like an anti-rotation. Anti-rotation, right. So this is where people get in trouble, right? Is mm -hmm. where they do a bunch of the rotational work, but they don't work the decelerators at all. Right. Right? Yeah. So then all of a sudden people go, man, I'm playing golf. I've been doing a bunch of oblique twists and my back is still killing me. And it's like, well, how much did you work that deceleration aspect as much as that acceleration right. um, prospect? Because you have obliques that go both ways, right? Because mm -hmm. they kind of lay at a 45, kind of overlapping each other. So if you're only working one side a ton, right, that other side kind of gets a little bit neglected, uh, neglected, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you have to work a little bit of that anti-rotation, some of the slowdown mechanics too, or else, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, all of a sudden you overwork. Right, and then you go to over, bend over to pick up your ball. You get that moment of uh, vulnerability, and mm -hmm. bam, you got a bad back. Right, right, right. So, <clears throat> sure. working the anti rotation as much as the rotation is very important, which can also kind of be a bonus uh, myth out there that I want to bust too, because we're practicing for softball, right? Mm -hmm. And and for strength training and sports, you want exercises to be as close to the sport as possible, but not mimicking the sport. If that makes sense, yeah. Sure. Right. It does. Yep. So for Kev, he wants rotation. Guess what? You're working the same muscles when you're batting as you are when you're throwing something against the wall like that with, mm -hmm. a, with, a, with a ball. But it's not exactly putting like a 10 pound baseball bat 
in your hands right. and swinging because that's going to what, Kev? It's going to throw your swing off. Oh, is, yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah, sure. That's why it's always killed me when people put the donuts on their on their bat and they warm up before they go swing. I'm like, mm. that's not the same swing that you do. Right. So there was a uh, another guy. Um, this was a PGA Tour champ like 10 years ago. His name was VJ Singh. Mm-hmm. I don't know if people remember him or not. But uh, he won the tournament. And then he got this trainer, right? And the trainer had him on top of this BOSU ball, taking a medicine ball, swinging back and forth. And uh, one of the guys that was a strength and conditioning mentor of mine goes, he's going to do terrible next year. I said, what do you mean he's going to do? He's he's mimicking his sport. He's like, it's too specific. It's going to throw a swing off. Next year, bombed. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Bombed right out of the tournament. Yeah. It was was pretty amazing from going top to just changing that one little thing in your your training to Dunsky, right? So... For every exercise, right, there's a person, right? Mm-hmm. There, there, there's a uh, reason behind it, right? If you, if you bring that, that sport in the gym and you practice that sport too specifically with different loads, mm-hmm. you're going to throw your sport off. Wow. So you kind of have to do generally say muscle movement, mm-hmm. but not too close, not to, the too close to the actual thing. Not too close to the actual thing, yeah, gotcha. yeah. So you wouldn't want to have like a bat handle, with like a chain attached to it and and weights because it's way too close. Yeah, it's way too close. And yeah. so that's just enough to mess you up big time. Wow, yeah. interesting. Yep, just enough to throw that bat off a little bit, and then all of a sudden you're Slump making city. Yep, you're making uh, you're you're getting struck out and slow slow pitch softball. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. yep. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So that was my first myth, right? Was was uh, core, and then you got a bonus there for. Um, sport specificity, right. s- specific training. Sure. Um, the other one, number two, is a huge one that I hear all the time, and it drives me nuts, right, is squats are bad for your knees. Squats are bad for your knees, ladies and gentlemen. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm on television, and I've paid to be on television. <laughs> Listen to me now. Squats are bad for your knees. They are bad, right? You okay. go to your doctor, you're like, I got a bum knee. Oh, are you doing squats? Yeah, better stop doing stop that. Stop doing squats. How do you get in a chair? <laughs> you squat. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get out of the couch? You're basically squatting, coming Kev, from a squat. Kev, do you have a bad knee right now? Kind of, yes. You better just sit there and not move. Don't move. Don't don't get out of don't your move. chair. Which is right? the worst thing because it hurts the most after I've been sitting. <laughs> and I stand up and it's like, oh, take about three or four steps. Mm-hmm. Eh, not too bad. Yep, exactly. So, I mean, we, we went out and worked out today, right? Uh-huh. In the beginning, it was, you're like, yeah, it's a little right. little bad. But the more we got into it, right? How'd right. it feel? Great. Felt a lot better, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. yep. we got the muscles firing the right order. Mm-hmm. And again, right? It's the right exercise for the right person, right? right? And the right load for the right person. Right. You, you do know? the squats right. Yep. Right load <laughs> for the right person. Yep. Squats are good. Yep. And for their technique, right? So when I was watching... Kev squat, I just had him change his foot position a little bit. I said, how's that on your knee? What'd you say? Great. Yeah, felt great, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So then you're able to do it. You get the right muscles firing in the right order, you should be able to squat with no problem. Right. Now, of course, we're not saying if you've got a torn ACL, MCL, and you've got, you know, cast on your knee or a big giant brace and you've been diagnosed with, you know, severe knee damage, mm-hmm. you should go out and do a bunch of squats. <laughs> but, you know, barring that, mm-hmm. just minor you know, inflammation or whatever. Yeah. Squats, if done properly, are fine. Yeah. And and if you have, you know, a bum knee like that and you're not working toward getting a pain free squat. Right. You you might want to rethink your training. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because exactly. that's that's one of my goals when people have a pain like that is like, let's get one pain free rep. Yeah. Sure. All right. Well, Time to take a quick break. We got to pay some bills, and we'll be right back here with the Cerebral Edge on Power Talk 1040 KPPF.
We are back on Power Talk 1040. This is the Cerebral Edge with Coach Chris. Yes, it is. Boom! And he's with Kevin Hayes over here. That's right. All right. Feeling good. I got the sweat marks under the under the armpits here. <laughs> Staking up the place. That's me. I was like, man, I smell onions. What is that? That's Kevin. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> That's all my fault, though. It is your fault. It is my fault. That's what you get. You know? But I'm not going to take all the credit because I didn't put in the work. You did, There babe. you go. There you go. Anyway, coming back, we are talking about myths, right? Myths of the gym. That's right. Right? The myths of the trade. That's right. So we already went over the first myth is you can target upper and lower abs, right? Right. You can either target the whole thing or nothing at all. Right. Um, the second one that we covered was a bonus tip that I didn't even think about, but just kind of came just out. popped out. Just kind of popped out. Was bringing sports into the gym, practicing your sport in the gym, right? Too specific can throw off your game. So in other words, don't be too specific. Don't think of different exercises that that generally work the same muscles, but keep them not very specific to the movements that you make when you're actually playing that sport. Exactly. Okay. Right. And then uh, we just hit on one a little bit was squats are bad for your knees, which me and Kev just debunked a second ago. Totally. Right. Totally. Um, and as always, right. I always hammer this and I've probably said a lot already. Right. right? But there is a exercise for the right person. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and a form for the right person. Right. So, mm-hmm. If it hurts while you're doing squats, you might be doing them wrong. Right. Get some help. Find somebody who knows how to do it. <laughs> right, right. So that way right. you can, I mean, I mean, it seems easy, right? Sure. A lot of this stuff seems easy. Right. Right. But there's technique with everything. Sure. Sure. Right? But but you definitely don't want to get away from being able to do a squat. You, yeah. I mean, you're going to need to bend down and mm-hmm. use your knees or come back up uh, from, from a sitting position in some way. Yeah. I mean, I tell you what, Kev, like the most heartbreaking thing that I see right now is people that are like in their seventies, eighties, and they can't even stand up out of a chair. Yeah. And I and you go to a third world country and that's like rare. Right. Everybody can do a full squat and sit sure. down and stand up. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean it's really really a tragic thing um when that starts to happen and your muscle starts to eat itself because you're not using it. Right. Yeah. Um anyway, so now we're gonna go on to uh number three. Actually four. Four. Yes, four. Do cardio for fat loss. Also, make sure you stay in the fat burning zone, right? Do cardio for fat loss. Mm -hmm. Stay in the fat burning zone. That seems logical to me. Yeah, it seems logical. And there is a lot of truth to some of this, right? Sure, sure. Of course, cardio is going to burn some calories, right? However, what burns more calories is resistance training. Oh, Right. Okay. Or else you wouldn't be losing weight, right? Right. And and building muscle because the more muscle you put on, the more metabolic uh, metabolic rate goes up while resting. Mm-hmm. So, one probably resistance training is going to get you more for fat loss than just doing straight cardio because straight cardio, even for an hour, I mean, you're looking at maybe 300, 400 calories you're burning, mm-hmm. and you can get overturn that with just a couple Oreos, right? Yeah, no question. Pretty, pretty easy. Um, so pretty much for fat loss overall, it's going to be your caloric intake versus caloric expenditure. Sure. Um, fat burning zone. There is a thing is the fat burning zone. Okay. So when you're doing low intensity, like right now, just sitting here, you and I are burning fat, Mm -hmm. right? Just, just by sitting around, right? When you start to go intense, right? You start to burn what they call glycogen carbohydrates, right? However, When you do that, guess what? You're also burning more calories. Mm. So when you do that, you are burning more calories. You are out of the fat burning zone, but guess what? More caloric expenditure through the day, the more fat loss that you're going to get over time. Mm. If that makes sense. Sure. So yes, while while you are walking, right? You're you're primarily burning fat, not necessarily adipose tissue, right? Not the fat you see, Right. right? But the energy system. Sure. You know, um, so if you do get out of that, don't get scared. Right. You're just burning a little bit extra calories. It's going to be fine. Right. Sure. Um, and there's also kind of a play on that too, right? Because if you do too much, you're going to get really hungry right. as well. Right. And then you're going to overeat. Right. So there's, there's kind of a play with that, mm-hmm. but overall, um, just doing cardio for fat loss, bogus, bogus, bogus. Okay. 
Uh, one of my other favorite studies that I did see was uh, it followed five women, and all they did was cardio, right, mm -hmm. for fat loss. While they lost weight, right, they went and did a DEXA scan and found out that even though they've lost weight, according to the DEXA scan, which measures your muscle to fat ratio, mm -hmm. they were still considered obese. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because if, if you think about it, right, if, if you're burning fat primarily, what uh -huh. does your body want to hold on to? Fat, fat, I guess. Yeah. 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 That's what you wants don't have to, enough fat. Yeah, Come yeah, on. Wants to stay, stick around, right? Right. So when you start going in and you start pumping iron with it, all of a sudden you're building the muscle tissue too. Right. right? So you and have to build that muscle tissue to replace the fat. You have to have muscle tissue. Right. Um, not necessarily replacing it, right? Sure. But balancing it. Okay. Right? Yeah, and gotcha. then, because you need a little bit of fat in your body. Sure. For sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, but you need that muscle tissue to be able to stand up, do things, mm -hmm. but um, also to increase your metabolic rate through the day. Mm -hmm. And when you increase your metabolic rate through the day, you're burning more calories, mm -hmm. right? So that's, yeah. that's why you also need that muscle tissue around. Um, number five, more sweat equals more fat loss. More sweat equals more fat loss. That's true. It's, it's true. true. I saw it on television. It was Sunday afternoon. <laughs> there was a guy in really tight shorts. He was also selling a fat burning pill. <laughs> he was also selling. <laughs> he had tapeworms in the other basket. He, was, he said, "The more you sweat, the more weight you lose." Yes. I was like, "Okay, where do I sign?" <laughs> <laughs> which, which is true. You will lose weight. You will until you drink your water back. Until you drink your right? water back, because that's just water coming out, right? Exactly. So uh, my my uh, instructor, one of my instructors, he, he used to have a office at a, at a local gym. And he would sit there and his office door would be open and be right next to the scale. And people, and someone would step on the scale and go, yeah, I lost four pounds. That was a great workout. My buddy would go, that was all water and you got to drink it back to hydrate. <laughs> you got to drink it because your, your trainer is going to say, oh, you got to stay hydrated. <laughs> stay away from the scale for the next couple of days. Yeah. Though. That's what I suggest. So people will sit there. I'll see them getting their sweatsuits, right? And then getting the sauna. And yeah. I'm just like, you're, you're only yeah. losing water and yeah. dehydrating yourself. If you're trying to make weight for a wrestling match, well, then okay. Then that all right. Sense. Yeah, whatever. You know, um, I've had to do it for powerlifting competitions, sure. getting the saunas and, yeah. you know, going to... A caloric restrictive diet, right, for a little bit, <laughs> and uh, do the, do the hot and sweat, and, and it sucked. I, I lost ten pounds in a week. Yeah, but guess what? In a couple of days, we saw back. There you go. You know, um, <laughs> it, it never is a, a permanent fat loss solution. Sure. Uh, lifting weights makes you bulky. Number six, right? Lifting weights makes you bulky. Yep, you get bulky, right? Yeah. Nope, yeah. eating too much makes you bulky. That's, well, that's, that's true. That's eating true. too much will make you bulky, right? <laughs> so make sure you have your caloric intake in balance with your energy expenditure, right? Um, seven, stretch before a workout. Stretch before a workout. Yep, so do the 30-second, you know, hamstring holds and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, quad, you know, stretches and all that stuff. They've done a lot of studies with that, showing a decrease of, of, uh, ener of uh, muscle activation after doing those. Oh. So actually, you can get more injured doing that. Really? So what I prefer to do is something like a dynamic warm-up. Mm -hmm. So like the shin box, and you can shin look box. that up on, on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, on Cerebral Edge, and that's my YouTube channel. And you can look up the shin box. That's a great uh, mobility drill to start before a workout, right? Mm -hmm. So anything... Like walking on the treadmill for 10 minutes, just getting your whole body kind of warmed up mm -hmm. before you go lift weights. Stick away from the stretching uh, before working out. Maybe afterwards, fine. If, if you really enjoy it, that's cool. Um, eight, muscle will turn into fat. Okay. Muscle will turn into fat. Have, so you're saying- Have you heard that? I have. Yeah, I've ha I have. I mean, you gain fat, but I don't think it- I don't think it turns into fat. It does not turn into fat. Right. right? They're two different things, right? Right. They're two you just completely stopped different. working out, um, and then you started eating Big Macs. Yeah. And then you've just gained fat. Yep. You keep the same caloric intake, right? right. But you stop working out, your muscle will get smaller, no doubt about it, but you can increase and adipose tissue or fat, right? So your muscles do not turn into fat. Your muscles get smaller while your fat gets larger <laughs> exactly okay. uh because you've raised your caloric intake right all of a sudden you're hungry 
you're hungrier more because you have all this muscle, you know, that requires a lot of yeah. you know, energy. So then you take more in, but if you stop working out, you will, it'll look like the muscle went to fat, but no, the muscle got smaller. You muscle just got, got fat. smaller and you got fatter. All right. Number nine, you can, I, you can exercise a bad diet. I think we've already hammered that pretty good. Pretty much. Talking about caloric expenditure versus energy expenditure. Right. And number 10, a bad workout is better than no workout, Kev. A bad workout is better than no workout. I've heard uh, I've heard that a thousand times. <laughs> Haven't we all? I have. I mean, mm-hmm. I've heard guys literally say that. Right. You know, it's a terrible workout. I was not into it, but you know, at least I was there and I I did something. I did something, right? So there's a two-sided coin to that, right? Right. So one is either they went in and they didn't do much, right? So they tricked themselves and they worked really hard that day. And then they'll eat normally, right? right? And then they'll be in a caloric limit and they'll go, I don't understand why I'm not losing weight. The other side to that is maybe you're under-recovered huh? and you need to recover a little bit more, oh. right? So if, say you have a squat day that day or you have, you know, some sort of percentage you have to hit and you go in and you're like, man, I'm just not feeling it. I'm, you know, my back is stiff or this hurts or that hurts. Maybe skip that, right? Yeah. Do some accessories and get out of there, sure. right? And not push through some things. Right. Because recovery is there for a reason. It's important, right? So, right. If, so if you're in there doing a workout, you could be doing yourself a disservice and delaying your gains. Right. Okay. And possibly an injury, which is going to keep you out of the gym for longer. Nobody wants that, right? Right. So anyway, to recap, top 10 list of, of myths right here. You can target upper and lower abs. That's bogus no. because it's one one muscle, right? Right. Sports specific workouts, right? Right. Don't do them. They'll throw you off. They'll throw you off your game, right? Um, squats are bad for your knees. Number three, totally bo- totally bogus, right? Number four, only do cardio for fat loss in the fat burning zone. Wrong. wrong it's wrong. some resistance training. Right. Uh, number five. More sweat equals more fat loss. Maybe more weight off the scale, but now more fat loss. Right. Uh, number six, lifting weights makes you bulky. False. False. Eating makes you bulky. Right. Number seven, stretching before a workout. Can actually get you injured before a workout. Right. Uh, number eight, muscle will turn into fat. They're Wrong. two different things. Right. Um, number nine, you can ex- out-exercise a bad diet. Man, it was way too easy to get those calories in. And number 10, a bad workout is better than no workout. Well, thanks for joining me again today, Kev. Yep, you're welcome. This has been the Cerebral Edge on Power Talk 1040. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope what you heard today will help make you at least 1% better because 1% every day adds up. Join me next weekend right here on Power Talk 1040. I'm Coach Chris. He's Kevin Hayes. Until then, stay stay strong. strong. This has been the Cerebral Edge on KPPF. Have a question for Coach Chris? Email him at CerebralEdge1 at gmail.com. That's CerebralEdge, the number one, at gmail.com. Join us next Saturday at 1 p.m. and Sunday at 1030 a.m. for another episode of the Cerebral Edge with Coach Chris on Power Talk 1040 KPPF.